location of the fascis on the platforms and the rock types exhibited in the fascis. Unbroken slopes from shore to open sea are swept by open ocean waves and currents. Those with slope breaks occurring within fair weather wave base will have high energy fascis at the slope break and restricted circulation behind it. It is the interaction of oceanic hydrodynamics with antecedent platform geomorphology that determines fascis characteristics and evolutionary trends in platform anatomy. Some platforms slope continuously from beach to basin without a pronounced break in slope, they are called homoclinal ramps. Rimmed shelves typically have reef rims but sand, wave complexes of carbonate grain stones can also act as hydrologic baffles, rims, all shelves have pronounced slope breaks accompanied by fascis changes that mark the shift from shelf interior to slope or slope toe. Homoclinal ramps may be attached to the mainland shores or more commonly a barrier island, beach complex is separated from the mainland shore by a lagoon. The sea on homoclinal ramps passes laterally from the strand line to basinal depths without a pronounced break in slope. Fasces changes are gradational rather than abrupt. Isolated platforms may be shelves or ramps, but rather than being attached or detached in close proximity to the mainland, isolated platforms are completely surrounded by oceanic depths. In other words, isolated platforms are islands. There is no size limit for isolated platforms, but common usage dictates that individual atolls and pinnacle reefs are not included as isolated platforms. Platforms must be large enough to exhibit a continuous lateral array of standard depositional successions across their submerged surfaces.
may be imbricated by unidirectional current flow. These fabrics affect reservoir porosity and can impart directional permeability, ultimately affecting reservoir performance characteristics. Elongate skeletal fragments such as echinoid spines, crinoid columnals, spicules, some foraminifera, and elongate bivalvenhi, spired gastropod shells are common in carbonate reservoirs. Diagenetic fabrics, figure 2.3b, include patterns of crystal growth formed during cementation. and crystal packing disposition of the crystal faces with respect to each other create an internal fabric that greatly affects reservoir connectivity because they determine the size, shape, and distribution of pores and connecting pore throats. Biogenic fabrics are described in connection with carbonate buildups or reefs and with the internal microstructure of skeletal grains. A classification of reef rocks was conceived to cope with variability in reservoir characteristics within a single reef complex, Embry and Clavin, 1971. The first rule in working carbonate reservoirs is look at the rocks. The importance of direct observation of rocks, cores, cuttings, or outcrops cannot be overemphasized. It is virtually impossible with present technology to identify carbonate facies, genetic pore types, or reservoir categories based on those pore types without direct examination of rocks. Seismic and logging methods, including data from imaging logs and seismic attributes, cannot discriminate between carbonate pore types, depositional facies and diagenetic facies, nor can they make 100% reliable and accurate determinations of mineralogical composition in multi-component reservoir rocks. One might wonder why mineralogical composition is important in carbonate reservoirs, because they consist mainly of calcite or dolomite. The answer is that porosity and permeability in some reservoirs is highly dependent on mineralogical composition, such as in those that produce exclusively from intercrystalline porosity and dolostones. In those reservoirs small percentages of accessory minerals may significantly alter reservoir quality. Calcite and adrite clay minerals, quartz, or other minerals generally have a negative influence on reservoir quality in dollar stone reservoirs because those minerals usually plug pore spaces that would otherwise be open. Without direct observation to confirm mineralogical composition, the risk of error increases in direct proportion to the number of different minerals that may be in the rocks and to the reliability of the log.